Hi guys, it's Calm from Indie Game Culture and today we are looking at Cult of the Lamb. So Cult of the Lamb, if you don't know, is a little bit of a dark, sinister, but equally very, very cute cult management meets roguelike simulator. It's a really interesting game. I reviewed it on the website and we're doing a couple of guides just to guide you through the process if you're coming at this game fresh and you don't quite know how to approach um, becoming this great overlord that you're expected to be. Um, and one of the things that is key to cult management within this game is the doctrines that you can pick up and the rituals that come with those and the traits that you can teach your cult members. It's vital when it comes to cult management because it will eventually start to unravel when you have quite a lot of group members, when people start to dissent, when people start to get on your case about how you're running the place. And it's essentially how you can either flatter them or go full dictator to try and bring them back in line. But let's jump into the action and I can show you exactly what's going on. So this is my cult, Heal Satin, in honour of our soft and silky lord. I've played the game through completely, platinum the game as well. Um, there's a trophy guide over on Avid Achievers if you want to check that out as well. Um, but yeah, I've, I've finished everything, uh, as you can see, by my very cute and colourful little cult here, just to show that off for you. But we're going to head over to the temple. And what we have here is our temple altar. So from here, you can give sermons, you can look at your rituals, you can uh, perform rituals, you can change your fleeces as well. Um, so I've got all the fleeces here. Um, and as well as that, you have your doctrines. So to give you a little bit of an overview of all the doctrines, you have five categories. You've got afterlife, you've got work and worship, you've got possessions, you've got law and order, and you've got sustenance. And I haven't unmarked any of these, because why would I? Um, but basically this showcases all the ones that you've picked throughout your time with the game. So every single time you unlock one of these, you will have to pick one or the other. So in this case, I would have picked this one and you lose this one forever. But they are very closely linked. So they have roughly the same effect, um, but one of them tends to be like a dictator sort of vibe where it's quite a negative effect on faith, but you get uh, maybe a monetary improvement or something to that effect. Whereas the other one very much keeps the, the flock favorable and the faith high but you might have to pay for that process uh, or you might lose out on something else so there's always a trade-off but it's a really easy way to keep your cult in line uh, whether that be through sacrificing one of them or giving them a day off or whatever it happens to be so to unlock these doctrines you need to collect um, little commandment stone fragments now you get them in a lot of different ways you can get them through raising the loyalty of your followers up to a certain point and then they will hand you one fragment or you can get those by beating mini bosses um, you can also buy them from vendors if you happen to find them on crusades there are a lot of ways to pick those up and you need three to create a full commandment stone once you have that then you can go and unlock a doctrine now doctrines can be traits or they can be rituals. So if it's a trait, it might be something along the lines of, yeah, this one here. So respect your elders, for example. All cult members will gain the respect of your elders and followers will receive five faith for every elderly person within the cult. That's something that is an ongoing permanent trait that will happen just naturally. Whereas you will have a ritual where you, in this case, it's a funeral where you can perform a funeral. And once you do so, every follower gains 20 faith when you do that. That's something that you have to actually perform. So let's talk about the rituals themselves. So you have um, a, se a selection of these here. These are the ones that I have access to. And what you need to perform those tends to be some resources the one that is always going to be needed apart from with these two one is money one is uh, mushrooms but otherwise you're going to need bones so they're acquired on crusade runs by killing monsters or there's going to be skeletons lying around on the floor that you can just hack to bits and then you can grab your bones that way as well once you have enough you can perform a ritual 
Um, otherwise, you might need money for this one or mushrooms for this one, as I say. And to perform that, let's let's just go and perform one just for for the crack, you know. So we're going to do a bonfire ritual, and this one raises the faith of the cult. And that's what that looks like. Pretty simple. Um, so just to finish off, because I think that that's that's really all you need to know about doctrines. They're pretty simple in the way that they're carried out. So I wanted to give a handful of my favourites just to make you aware of what ones you should maybe pick. Now, one that you always get regardless um, of what way or play style that you choose to go with is the brainwashing ritual. Now this one is one that gets handed to you for finishing the quest uh, within the, the Mushroom uh, Kingdom, Spore Grotto I believe it's called. Um, and that one just means that you don't have to worry about faith for two whole days. It's really handy if um, your flock are really, really hungry and you don't have food resources, in which case you can just go, do you know what, we're going to brainwash you, you're going to be happy for a couple of days, I'll get food resources scattered up again, and then by the time you've got your food all stocked up, they will be back to normal again. Another really handy one is the Ritual Fast. This is one that's really good in the early game. If for the for the exact same reason, if you don't have food to give your followers, they will lose faith if you do this one. But you won't have to, you won't have to worry about feeding them for three days, and it's great for two reasons. One, if you don't have food, it means that you kind of get out of dodge. But also, if you want to go on a crusade run or you want to go on multiple crusade runs, and you don't have to want if you don't want to have to worry about feeding your cult members, then this is ideal because then you can go on maybe two or three consecutive runs without having to check in unless you want to do loyalty and sermons but it's really down to how much time you invest in the cult management side of the game um another great one um is absolutely loyalty enforcer this is a fantastic one um up until the point where you've got all your doctrines because one of the quickest ways to get the stone commandment fragments is by raising the loyalty of your followers up to full and then you get a fragment and this repeats. But if you want to do that, you'll have to go into a conversation with one of your followers and you'll have to collect, or sorry, not collect, you'll have to select the inspire or bless option and that will give them a small buff um, towards their full loyalty bar. Now, if you have a loyalty enforcer assigned, what you can do instead is have them go around and do that for you. And you can double up on that and you can do it alongside them. But if you just want it to be done passively whilst you go and do more important things, that is an incredible option. Um, another great one is wedding. If you find that faith is kind of getting away from you and there's a lot of dissenters within the group, the easiest thing to do is to just marry them. And the good thing about cults is polygamy is encouraged. So if you have four or five spouses, perfectly fine. Just um, use that there. You'll get a, quite a sizable buff to your faith. And it means that you don't have to worry too much um, about keeping people in line. The only caveat to that is if you do uh, marry multiple people, you will find that they get jealous and there, there's a chance that that can have a negative effect down the line. But a, a good way to combat that is to sacrifice them with the resurrection option if you happen to die on a crusade run because you get extra hearts for um, sacrificing your spouse. Or you can just sacrifice them regardless um, because you'll, you'll usually have more than enough members if you really want to have them. Um, and then another great one is Ritual of the Ocean's Bounty. Now this is one that is great if you want to start working through those side quests because Ritual of the Ocean's Bounty allows you to collect rare um, fish which you'll be needing if you want to finish the fisherman's quest. It also allows you to get more fish so uh, it means if you want to make food that way it's an easy way to do that and thirdly if you want to get rare items and drops out in the wild on the crusade runs, for example, if you're looking for the follower skin for the snail and you're finding it really difficult to actually find the snail, if you use Ritual of the Ocean's Bounty, it means that it's it's more likely that that snail will show up on your run. 
So that's another option that you can use. But yeah, that's everything that I really needed to go through with uh, doctrines today. I hope that's gave you an idea of how everything works. And if you haven't played Cult the Lamb, absolutely go and play it because it is fantastic. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to Indie Game Culture and I'll see you next time.